Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to worship this night. A few announcements as we begin. Uh, you may know that Fran Jorgensen is in the hospital. She's at St. Anthony, Anthony's in Rockford. Uh, she would love to have more visitors, um, but please call the hospital before you uh, make the trip up to Rockford. She's hoping to be transferred down here to uh, Bethany for rehab within the coming days, but of course with these things the schedule is uncertain. Uh, Trunk or Treat is coming up in just a few weeks, Friday the 28th. Uh, if you would like to participate with your vehicle or in some other way, uh, please do sign up so that we can plan for your being part of this uh, community outreach. Uh, the Grief Share Surviving the Holidays event, the uh, registration is now open. You may have seen the links on the email blast that Brandy sent out this morning. Um, so if you could benefit from that or if you know somebody else that could, please direct them to us. Uh, the community Thanksgiving meal, there's a few announcements on that in the bulletin, but the one I want to highlight is that we've been asked as a congregation to uh, support the effort by donating cream of mushroom soup and french fried onions. So there'll be a display in the narthex for you over the coming weeks, so we appreciate your help with that. Um, Mary Ann's going to update us on LWML uh, in a, a few minutes towards the end of the service. Uh, we'll have video uh, as well, so look forward to that, um, as it's LWML Sunday tomorrow, but it's so good we're going to celebrate it tonight as well, so I uh, look forward to that. And uh, Bill, you had an announcement, please. Yeah. I don't know how many have looked at their bulletin, but tomorrow is uh, Pastor Appreciation Sunday. So we wanted to take a moment here to just recognize Pastor and, and thank him for all the things he's, he does for us. Pastor, here's a card from the congregation. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We're here tonight to worship our Lord, to receive the pardon of our sins. Let's first take a moment to reflect upon those sins. Gracious God, I confess that I have sinned against you this day. Some of my sin I know, the thoughts and words and deeds of which I am ashamed. But some is known only by you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I ask forgiveness. Deliver and restore me that I may rest in peace. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office, am called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated as we continue our worship in song.
pray. O God, you did not spare your own Son, but gave him up for us all. Grant that by faith we may trust in your promises and live according to your will. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. First reading this night from Paul's letter to the Romans, the 8th chapter. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies, who is to condemn. Christ Jesus is the one who died, more than that, who was raised. Who is at the right hand of God, who indeed is interceding for us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sore? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all the day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As you are able, please stand for the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 12th chapter. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said, Stay dressed for action and keep your lamps burning, and be like men who are waiting for their master to come home from the wedding feast, so that they may open the door to him at once when he comes and knocks. Blessed are those servants whom the master finds awake when he comes. Truly, I say to you, he will dress himself for service and have them recline at table. And he will come and serve them. If he comes in the second watch or in the third and finds them awake, blessed are those servants. But know this, that if the master of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have left his house to be broken into. You also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, O Christ. Please be seated for the hymn.
Christ and our comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> There's just something special about holding someone else's hand. Picture these scenarios in your mind. A new parent holding the hand, the tiny hand of her newborn child, her little finger trying to wrap her one of its fingers around one of mom's. A teacher holding the hand of that timid kindergarten student as he braves crossing the parking lot. A brave teenager reaching out his hand to help somebody up, somebody who has fallen victim to the physical aggression of the class bully. Two young people nervously holding hands as they brave the middle school hallway as a couple for the very first time. And these same two people, years later, before a pastor on their wedding day, hand in hand before the altar of God. And then decades later, hanging on to one another as they gingerly walk the aisles of the grocery store at a much slower pace than they are used to. And then loved ones holding their hands as they breathe their last and they transition from this life to eternal life. Experiences we can all relate to. Powerful experiences. Almost sacred experiences. Her name was Laura Lee. She was a 33-year-old member of my congregation in Central Illinois. Beyond that, she was a beloved nurse at Carl Foundation Hospital. And one day in February 2015, however, she is on the other side of the bed. She is close to being declared brain dead. She has no hope of surviving the stroke that she has suffered. Her family is getting frequent updates on the progress of matching Laura Lee's organs with grateful recipients. And emotionally, the family is in a state of suspended animation already starting to grieve, but not able to do so fully. Her husband of only two and a half years is dreading what happens next for him and their five-month-old twins. And then comes the artwork. It's a common school project for really long, young children to place their hands in paint or plaster of Paris or some other material and make an image for mom and dad that is displayed in the house proudly for the longest time and then is packed up and makes its way into the scrapbook or the memory box to be opened years later. Only this time it wasn't kids making the memory. With help, it was mom. And what came out on that sheet of paper was not only hands, but a little heart shape in the middle of the page. A reminder for these boys that mom loves them. She can't grip their fingers any longer, but she still touches their hearts. Yes, hands can be a powerful thing. As you know, tomorrow is LWML Sunday. The Lutheran Women's Missionary League is a vitally important organization within our church body, one that has members throughout North America. And for 80 years now, these ladies have been supporting mission efforts throughout the world. They have reached countless thousands of people with the gospel. Those little mite offerings add up, and they help spread that good news of a Savior who has come and suffered and died and risen for us. And indeed, the LWML gives a strong witness to how God's hand of love holds each one of us. Now, our text for this LWML Sunday is the epistle letter that I read earlier. And we'll focus on two questions that Paul poses to the Romans. What then shall we say to these things? And if God is for us, who can be against us? And clearly the main person, the subject of the verse, is God. We may say, well, Pastor, that's obvious, and maybe it's not even worth mentioning. But think about it, it's tempting to sometimes think that our success is due to our grip, our hold, our heroic actions. And it may be a subtle thing, but it's a slippery slope if we begin to travel down that road in our lives. 
We can have thoughts of self-dependence, of thinking of ourselves more highly than we ought. Then those can open the door to believing that we are the main focus and the main people in God's narrative. But the Apostle Paul offers us a different perspective. He makes it clear that God's everlasting life is the thing that holds us. And especially when we feel and we are insufficient, when we feel we're not up to the task, we're not up to snuff, He is all sufficient. And because He is all powerful, the rest of our time for LWML Sunday is simple but significant. And we'll follow this outline. Jesus is for us and with us, and because he is these things, we have no fear of condemnation. We have no fear of separation, but we do have a certainty of victory because Jesus is for us and with us. No fear of condemnation shall hit our hearts, for Paul tells us, what then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? We're dropped right into the middle of Paul's letter. And not only that, we're dropped into the middle of an important section. And so in that first verse, we've got that phrase, these things, and we ask, well, what things? The answer is this. Paul has just acknowledged that God has done everything for our salvation. God alone has justified us. God is for us. He's done all that we need. He has sent Jesus to die for our sins. And God the Father has accepted his payment. The check has cleared. No, we're not dealing with a situation where the bank stamps that check, non-sufficient funds, and we have to pony up, we have to make things whole. No, the check that is written in the blood of Jesus, it is marked paid in full. He died so that we may live. And Jesus, after doing all of that, he still isn't done He's up there praying for us, still fully engaged in our lives, still engaged in the battle for our souls. The late Christian writer, Corrie Ten Boom, put it quite well. She said this, There is no pit so deep that God's love is not deeper still. Let's face it, we've all dug some pretty deep holes, haven't we? Perhaps the wounds are still fresh because you inflicted them just this past week. Did you say something you already regret? Did you speak in a tone that you wish you could take back? Have you hurt relationships with your divisive attitude? Maybe not this past week, but you can say yes to all of those questions, and I can too. You see, the law is convicting. When we're faced with the specifics, we see where we have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Yes, the pit is pretty deep, but God's love is deeper still. His arm is long and able to rescue us, and in fact, His outstretched arms on the cross of Calvary did rescue us. And at the end of those arms are hands that still have nail marks on them. But they are hands that were made alive again as Jesus was raised from the dead. He is for us, and he is with us. But Satan, the accuser, he's still at work. He still wants to level those charges against you and me. He wants to condemn us. And yes, he's right. We have done things we're ashamed of. But no matter what they are, no matter how bad you think they are, Jesus 
has overcome them. And he says the result is clear, that you have no fear of condemnation. This important message the LWML shares with the world, this life-giving truth, they are committed to spreading. Because for many decades, through this group of brave and faithful ladies, gospel seeds have been sown. The good news is spread through the Holy Spirit working through these women. And that leads us to the next point of our text. Because Jesus is for us and with us, we have no fear of separation. Go back to those images that I had you imagine of hands being joined together. That's God. He not only grabs your hand, he will not let go of it. For St. Paul writes, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword? And Paul doesn't give us much time to think that maybe, just maybe, one of these awful things that we just read might do us in. He puts that idea to rest purely emphatically as he writes next. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God. Christ Jesus, our Lord. Lots of stuff that Paul lists. But notice what's missing from his answer. Nowhere does he say that this life will be a carefree ride. That we will somehow be excused from challenges and difficult circumstances. He does not say that distress or danger will not find its way to our doorstep. We're no different than Paul is. Now Paul shared his own experiences with these things as he wrote later to the Corinthians. And listen to some portions of that letter. He talks about imprisonments with countless beatings, often near death. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. A night and a day I was adrift at sea. In danger from rivers, danger from robbers, danger from my own people, danger from Gentiles, danger in the city, danger in the wilderness, danger at sea, danger from false brothers. We know this from our own experience as well. Each of us could make a list of our daily struggles and know our list would not look exactly like Paul's or each other's. However, our lists are real and sometimes we might feel like those odds are stacked against us. But take heart, God declares you righteous and loved in your Savior. You, yes you, your assurance, my assurance, comes from the true love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Our Lutheran, Lutheran women in mission, they've served many people for many years, people whose lives seem out of control. But God is always in control, and God has chosen these ladies to deliver this important message, and he's chosen us to serve others in love as well. So we don't have a fear of condemnation. We don't have a fear of separation. And so we come to our third point. Not what we don't have, but what we do have. Because Jesus is for us. And he's Emmanuel with us. We have the certainty of victory. For our Savior went to the cross and he conquered, and he made that victory personal through the gift of baptism. You see, baptism means victory. Victory over sin, victory over everlasting death, victory over any power the devil has or thinks he has or should have over us. 
We are more than conquerors. We are super victorious. Our victory is victorious. Not because we hold on to Christ, although we do. The victory is real because of his hold on us. He holds us tight, never letting go. And that allows us to live each day, even this one, confidently trusting in him. As a baptized child of God, remain in his word. Be reminded of your identity. You are a victorious one in Jesus. For you have been saved by faith, by grace through faith. You have been free to respond to his call, to respond enthusiastically like the prophet Isaiah saying, Here am I, send me. Lutheran women in mission, thank you for your hearts and your hands that share the gospel so many. Thank you for responding to the call of Jesus. Thank you for your example. Thank you for your encouragement to us. May God continue to hold you tight. May God continue to hold us tight in the love of Christ Jesus, our Lord, this night and always. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, Keep our hearts, keep our minds in Christ Jesus until life eternal. Amen. Let's stand. We confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He ascended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Does anyone have any prayers that you would like me to add to what I've already prepared to speak on all of our behalf tonight? A bill? My grandson, Nashville Rock. What a bill of charity. Is boot camp going okay for him so far? Oh, yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's, he's in his room. Okay, good. Anyone else? Let's go to our board. congregation and throughout our country and world, that each person involved would see opportunities to be salt and light to their neighbors. <coughs> and through the faithful gathering of mice, may these Lutheran women in mission continue to encourage us to put what you have given us into the mission of reaching the lost. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord, we ask you to sanctify our homes with your presence. Remind us that nothing can separate us from your love. Unite the members of families in love towards you and towards one another. We ask you to guide our congregation in our life together and in our witness to the world. Give us your grace. Strengthen us through your word and sacraments. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Mighty Lord, we live in a horrible world at times. 
And so we ask you to bring an end to all war and violence. Guide and protect those who defend us against our enemies, those who preserve order against the threat of terror. We ask you especially to watch over the members of our military, including those who are known to our congregation, Ricky and Matthew, Ronnie and Justin, Russell, Wyatt, Alex, and Colin. And for Maxwell, as he prepares to join them in standing a post on our behalf. And Lord, we ask you to be with those who sit in judgment over evildoers. Let justice and peace prevail. Let us all work together for the common good. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Loving Lord, we pray for those who struggle with long-term ills, sudden emergencies, and anything in between. We ask you especially to be with Barb and Adeline, with Keith and Janice, Kevin, Lee, Alice, Jean, and Betty. Also Carol and Daryl, Cindy and Gloria, Joanne, Matt, Shirley, and Miranda, Riley and Andrea, Kenny and Eileen, Jan and Lynn and Jeff, and also Fred. We ask you to keep their faith strong, hear their prayers for help. Be with the first responders, emergency technicians, doctors and nurses, indeed all who use their gifts to relieve pain and restore health. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, we're thankful for the gift of eternal life, but we're also grateful for the gift of earthly life that you allow us to enjoy. And so we thank you and we celebrate you know, with Jennifer and Judy, with Margaret and Bryson as they celebrate the gift of another year of life. As they celebrate their birthdays, may they not only be thankful, but confident that you will continue to watch over them and bless them. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Merciful Lord, grant that we may receive all your blessings with grateful hearts. Lead us to respond with voices of praise and thanksgiving and lives of holiness and righteousness, displaying in outward form the faith that lives in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again, the one in whose name we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, through your Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong, and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. At this time, we're going to hear more about the LWML. If somebody could cue up the video in back. Since 1942, the Lutheran Women's Missionary League, or LWML, has been a gathering place for mission-focused women of all ages from around the world. United in their love for the Lord, these women humbly use their God-given gifts to joyfully proclaim Christ and honor Him by serving others. As Lutheran women, we walk in faith together and seek to continue to grow in our love of God. Through Bible study, prayer, worship, and service, we are devoted to Christ and grateful for the work God has done in each of our lives. Because of Christ's sacrificial love for us, we are guided by the Spirit to care for and encourage those around us. Each day we are given occasions to share Christ's love in word and action. The LWML gives Lutheran women additional opportunities to serve, love, mentor, learn, and grow for the benefit of our faith and the furthering of His Kingdom. The LWML seeks to share the love of God with as many people as possible. We do this together through service and funding mission grants. Donations, called Might Offerings, given in love, support missions locally and around the world. 
often to places where God's gift of salvation is still unknown. So welcome. We're glad you are here so we can grow in faith together and share the love of Christ. Using our individual abilities, time, and talents, we can all serve the Lord in meaningful ways. As Lutheran Women in Mission, we joyfully proclaim Christ, support missions, and equip women to honor God by serving others. Receive now the blessing of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. 
The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace. Amen. Amen.